Hey everyone, I'm Jason Peacock, and there is a new game out from Simon called Hate. This is a skirmish game based on this dark themed comic book called The Chronicles of Hate by Adrian Smith, the artist also involved with this game. And it's a dystopian, futuristic, or post-apocalyptic world where these tribes brutally fight for survival. There's cannibalism and brutal battles. And they wanted to convert this to cardboard. Now, before I get into how it plays, it's, it's worth noting that this was a mature 18 or older Kickstarter exclusive game. Without further word of ado, let's jump into how it plays and then I'll see you at the table to give you my thoughts on it. So everybody's going to choose one of the eight clans that comes in the box or 11 if you bought any of the three expansion clans. This here is a scenario sheet and it shows you where everybody goes. If there's multiple layers, it tells you what order to put your plateaus in and it gives you the win objective here. Usually there's one for the attacker and one for the defender. And there's a good amount of these that come with the game. Now depending on where the fight is going to be, on the campaign map, outer circle or inner circle, will tell you what choices you have. This is an inner circle battle here, and so is this. So like I said, there's a good amount of double-sided scenarios. The attacker is gonna pick a spot on the map. A clash is made up of two battles. You're the attacker once, you're the defender on the other. The attacker picks a spot that's adjacent to one of their territories that's belonged to the enemy they're fighting or nobody owns it. The numbers here are combat points awarded at the very end of the campaign. The amount of clashes, that's two battles that you play, depend on the number of players. So playing a two player game, you fight each other over five clashes and then you'll tally up victory points. On the other side of the clan sheet is where you track your victory points and they are hate and resources. As you go along, you're gonna hit these bold numbers or underlined numbers. Hate lets you upgrade your clan, and resources lets you upgrade your village. I'll explain that a little bit later. Each player has 11 cards representing their clan. There's going to be six warriors, all with different colors, all numbered with the, the, the bases matching. There's going to be two young bloods. These guys are your ranged guys. There's going to be a champion, a shaman and your prince. In addition to your tribe cards, each tribe has their own unique deck. You're gonna have two of these face up on the table, and those are the ones you have access to for that game turn, or game round, I should say. There's a total of four game rounds max, unless someone wins before that. Once you use one of these, they are discarded, and some of them have a cost. In this case, it would be one hate, Usually they're savagery that cost, but this clan spends hate in particular. Each clan also has their own village sheet. This top row here are advantages that you get to use during the game. You uh, put your uh, savagery token on it, you start with the first one crossed out on each one, and as you level up over the campaign, you start unlocking new ones. And then you've got other abilities in your village that'll all let you have. This will give you the maximum amount of upgrades, amount of mercenaries you can have. This one lets you hold on to another tribe card. And then you've got the oven and the torture pit. If you carry bodies back, you can get a max of one in each. They give you hate and resources. Converting knocked out guys into victory points. Gruesome, I know. In addition to your overarching objective, in this case it's just one, you gotta take down the enemy titan, but in this one here, the defender would have to cook three enemies in the oven, and the attacker would have to destroy the oven. They each have their own goals. But in addition to the scenario goals, you get 
two secret missions, and then you're going to pick one at the start of the game. Now, if you are behind by 10 victory points, you get underdog mission instead of a secret mission. And these have really big rewards. They help you come back from behind. On to the gameplay here. Each clan starts with five of these savagery tokens. Now, there are buffs that may let you start with more. Uh, territory upgrades that'll let you start with seven. And on your turn, you would activate two guys. You put a savagery beside them. These big guys here cost two savagery. Then you move all your guys that you activated up to three spaces. One, two, three. You can go diagonal. You can jump down off a plateau. One, two, three. Going up plateau is a little more difficult. It'd be one extra space for every level you jumped up. One, two, three, four. I wouldn't be able to jump up to there. And then you can do an action, which is attacking, picking up a body, pillaging a hut, in which there's none set up right now, or using some kind of action that's on an upgrade card or uh, a tribe card or a scenario specific action. Like in this case, launching a catapult. Combat is very straightforward. Your warriors, Roll two dice when attacking, and two when defending. This support skill is a very tactically important part of the game. That means that if this guy is next to the target of an attack, and someone else is attacking that target, you get to add one dice for everybody that has support that's next to that guy. Now on the dice, you've got a defend, you've got an attack, this means you get another savagery token. You have no choice. If you roll a savagery, you have to take it. And you have your wild, which lets you decide what face you want to make that. If I roll three hits, or say I roll two hits, the defender has to defend. He gets a savagery and a wild. He's not going to be able to defend, so he might as well make that wild a savagery. If you don't get enough saves to match the attack, boom. They are down for the game, and they can be picked up and carried off to uh, get turned into resources, to put it politely. Play is going to go back and forth with each player activating two units. If they've already got a savagery beside them, then they can't be activated. Of course, there's always things like your reactivate someone ability here. Now, I've unlocked this one at the start of my second uh, campaign here, so I'll be able to reactivate two guys that have been activated, but typically if they've got savagery beside them, then they are activated already. When everybody is at the start of a player's turn, if all of their guys are activated, and they don't want to use anything that'll let them activate them, uh, reactivate them, or they have no savagery tokens, then that ends the game round. Game round ends, you remove all savagery from your village board, from the board, you get two new tribe cards and discard the one. So if you didn't use them, uh, you lose them. And then the next game turn starts with the attacker always starting each game round, activating two of his guys. Now, if you only have enough to activate one guy, then you just activate one. And play goes back and forth until either four full game rounds have expired or someone has won. So that's very straightforward. Uh, set of rules. Let's talk about the intermission for a minute. During the intermission, anybody that's been picked up and is being held by an enemy, they get converted into resources, which means they are killed if they have any upgrades. So, well, in this guy's case, he has a scar. So there's all these clear underlays here. And these scars would give you some kind of disadvantage. But let's look at upgrades. So I got my print here with the toughness means that they can actually get knocked out twice. As soon as they get hit, uh, there's a hate token they start with, then the uh, the other player would get that. But you can see I got this upgrade that lets me reroll attacks. You slide it in and now that's that guy's ability. But if he gets killed, he loses all his upgrades and he'll come back fresh at the start of the next clash. If you guys get killed between the first and second battle, they don't get to come in to the second battle, you simply play without him and you're down some manpower. So the amount of upgrades you get, again, depends on how many resources and hate tokens you got. Usually there's an award for winning this scenario. These uh, underlined ones right here, those are tribe-specific upgrades. Each tribe 
has six of their own unique upgrades, unique to that tribe. Means you get one of those, and you can assign it to anyone that wasn't knocked out or carried off and converted to resources. As far as generic upgrades go, everybody that's entitled to one, you'll deal out one per upgrade that's uh, given out, plus one, and then they draft it. And as you can see, there is a huge selection of generic upgrades here. The other thing that happens is the players roll for scars. At the back of the rule book, there is a scar chart. And it'll tell you if you get a certain scar. Not every roll is going to be a scar. Sometimes you might get luck out and for some reason you're going to gain hate or um, there's no effect. This is akin to the death curses in Arcadia Quest. After the intermission, the defender picks another place on the map, picks a different scenario, and they battle again. And that is one clash. You also record your guys that die every round because at the end of the game, most deaths lose 20 points, second most lose points, etc., etc. Remember, the winner is gonna be whoever's got the highest out of their least amount of either hate or resources, plus combat points for territories they control at the end of the game, minus the amount of deaths that they suffered. All right, let's go back up top and I'll tell you what I think. So that's hate. Now, if you just take the basic mechanics of this game, move a guy three spaces, roll dice to attack, this would blow out the candles of a centurion's birthday cake. However, now Eric Lang is not credited as a designer, but he is the director of game design and his influence is all over it because he likes to take very streamlined basic mechanics and then add lots of decisions around that. And that's what this game has. You've got a lot of great decisions do you go right for uh, an objective? Do you go to trees and harvest resources? I didn't mention this in the overview, but if you end your move next to a tree space, or on a tree space, I should say, they take up four spaces on the board, then you can automatically take one of the resources that are on it. Each tree starts with two. So maybe you're down and you just want to go for some easy victory points instead. Maybe there's a real upgraded guy that's a pain in your neck and you just want to take that guy out. You also have the tactical movement of your warriors with support. Maybe you want to move guys to surround someone so that when you move up to attack, you roll the extra dice. So everybody moves and then they do their action. So you would move two people, possibly three. There's actually um, a mechanic I did not talk about during the overview and that is the resource token. At any time, a player who has the most resources would take that harvest token and they can activate a third person if they want to. Soon as resources are tied, it goes back to the center. Nobody has it. So there is a tug of war struggle for that resource token. It's a real nice advantage to activate a third guy. Then you've got your tribe cards that gives each tribe some really great powerful advantages. So making the most of those work. So I think this game does great in giving you a super streamlined set of rules that anyone can play. The combat in it, I am in love with. I like that Bushido blade brutality. You either block a hit or you drop from that ax. Maybe you want to uh, focus on picking up bodies. Maybe you are gonna try and get that objective at all costs. You also might plan for the second battle and just try and take out some key people so that they have less to start with on the next battle. The intermission phase uh, between battles with the, the upgrades and the scars and upgrading your village, that's the mechanic that really drew me to this game in the first place. I really like uh, the progression over the course of a campaign. I like suit upgrading your guys and the way the upgrade cards go into the sleeve is genius. I like how you upgrade your village. You've got great decisions to make there. Do you want to upgrade your feats of savagery track? At the tops you got more advantages during the game. Do you want to um, upgrade your Hall of Heroes so that you can take down a mercenary? Mercenaries are in some scenarios they're gonna have their own deck of cards and they're kind of a neutral bad guy. 
you've got to take those guys out, pick up their body, and then carry them off the board, and then they're going to come back and replace your prince, your big guy. So I'm a big fan of the tactical positioning, the streamlined rules, the brutality of the combat. It's um, high stakes. If someone attacks you, you better hope you defend or that guy's eliminated from the from the the game. The variety is great. You've got eight different tribes in the base game box and then another three. Speaking of the figures, the detail on these things are phenomenal. As a painter, I'm stoked to splash some color on these guys. Do I add them to the end of my thousand figure backlog or do I jump them straight up to the beginning of the line? I love the way the victory points are tracked over the course of a campaign. Sure, maybe uh, you're not winning very many scenarios and you're not getting the, the hate or the resource reward or the special scenario specific upgrades. Like um, this one that uh, I just finished offered the catapult upgrade. Now a guy can stay in one place. If he doesn't move, he can make a five dice ranged attack and reroll any misses. So there's a lot here that I personally like about the game. Now, I am a sucker for skirmish games. I didn't really need another one. I've got Night Vault, Shade Spire, Giant Killer Robots, Mythic Battles Pantheon, The Edge, Dawnfall, Ultimate Warriors, Crossmaster Arena. I just love moving plastic around a, a game board using tactics to get the upper hand. It's just my kind of game. Not the only kind of game I like, but I'm definitely a sucker for a good skirmish game. And this one does deliver for me. There are some drawbacks, though. Even though you can mitigate the dice somewhat with your feats of savagery, you can re-roll up to a, a few times over the course of a game turn. You can add extra dice. Even after you've rolled and seen what your results were, you can take one in extra. If you're just rolling crap no matter what, like a lot of these type of games, there's your best laid plans aren't going to come to fruition. I'm also not a huge fan of all the different colored bases because when you're looking at the map and everything's unpainted, it's hard to really tell who everybody is because there's um, colored bases on both sides. They are delineated with these... Um, these base rings and most people probably won't have an issue with it and if you go to paint it you pro and you want to keep the base color you you've got to break them off the base paint them and then glue them back on or you got to paint the base the the colors that's a very minor gripe but some of the base colors are so similar in color it's hard to tell them apart especially if you've got colorblind problems like uh, your green and your blue if your lighting isn't great it's hard to tell which guy is which on the corresponding cards because some of the colors are very similar. Like Warrior 5 and Warrior 6, very similar colored green. Warrior 4, a slightly darker shade. Same with the blues. Three slightly different shades of blue. And if your lighting's not amazing, it's your... You're really having a hard time telling what's what. Also, the 3D terrain is awesome, but it doesn't come with the game. It's an extra. Otherwise, you're using cardboard that's stacked to whatever layers they're supposed to be. Definitely takes away from the game. Now, this game is Kickstarter exclusive. You might be asking, what's the point in reviewing a Kickstarter exclusive game? Well, two reasons. There were retail packages that went out, so maybe you're considering buying a retail package of this from the store. And you never know if they're going to do a relaunch of a Kickstarter exclusive campaign, similar to what uh, Monolith does with Batman, Conan, um, Claustrophobia. So I thought it might be good to put a review out there anyway. I like the uh, variety in the scenarios. There is a good amount of these. I like that the game plays quick. It sets up quick. Sometimes a game lasts 20 minutes. You you can win. I mean, I haven't seen very many go to the end of the fourth round, so... Now, you take a game like Mythic Battles, which I love. It's one of my favorite games. The setup to that, especially if you have all the content, is grueling. It takes forever, and then you got to draft your armies, and if someone's not familiar with the game, they don't know who to draft or, or whatnot. So as far as, like, bing, bang, boom, let's set up, it's fantastic. The Game comes with two game boards, so even though it's a two-player game, and there's a caveat I'll mention in a minute, it's um, it has enough 
components to play two simultaneous games at the same time which is a fantastic thing. Now the caveat I mentioned is they do have scenarios for three and four player free for all, which is a nice addition. I have not played those yet. Uh, the components, the plastic uh, resources or, or uh, the plastic, you know, everything is always great. I mean, typically if I uh, have the option, I'll upgrade to plastic pieces. Um, but the, the base game just comes with everything. It's not extra. The dice are a nice quality, they're etched in. So for me, there's a lot here to like about the game. Um, especially how all the victory points are tallied over the campaign. Because uh, maybe you're not winning a lot of scenarios, but instead you decide to focus on just killing as many guys as possible. Because if you have the most deaths, you're going to lose 20 points at the end of the game. So. Winning the scenarios isn't everything, although it is nice. So let's talk about some of the negatives. Now I mentioned uh, the, the base colors. Uh, the theme of this game is very dark. And the Kickstarter video that launched this game was abysmal. They just filled it with bad language. I, can, I just picture uh, the development crew sitting around just like, let's make a game on uh, this, this hate graphic novel. Now the graphic novel was I did read and I really liked it. It's very dark themed. There's maybe 50 words across the whole two books. Um, it's a very visual story. So I don't know what the what the language is in there for. So there is some uh, there's some adult uh, artwork on some of the, the the tribe members, especially some of the female tribes. There's nudity. There's bad language in the rule book, like um, especially with some of the scars, so that's something you need to be aware of. Speaking of the rule book, it got a lot of complaints online. They had an FAQ already released by the time this showed up at my door. I don't know why Cool Mini keeps having problems with this, like Rise of Moloch was terrible. It was almost unplayable without Board Game Geek uh, and FAQs. Now I didn't find the rule book as bad as some. And they did, they did, um, you know, leave a, a lot of examples along the rule book. But I don't know why companies don't do, take a page in the back. I don't care about the flavor text of each clan. Why not just do a full game turn or two, break it down so it's the best way to learn from examples. There's a lot of easily missed rules and you can catch them all in one net just by breaking down a game turn. The rule books that do that definitely rise above the rest. You get through the rules, read the game turn, and you're like, oh yeah, okay. You know what I mean? So come on, let's take a page, come on, and start breaking down a full game round, especially with so many different caveats. You've got all these different tribe cards and um, like the huts especially that leave so many ambiguities. But all in all, like the, the rules are simple enough with the FAQ, and Board Game Geek, I don't have any problems currently. You never know what pri problems are going to arise using the new uh, clans. Like, uh, the Shaman from this this clan that I'm using starts with a hate on him. It just says starts with one hate. Is that added to my tally at the end of the game? Is it go right into my pool? Do I put it on the card? The FAQ had to tell me that. So there's a lot of little things like that. The Secret Missions. Uh, it's great to have other things to go for. But in this mission here with no trees to harvest and no huts to pillage, I those were my two secret missions. Harvest the most trees or pillage a hut. I couldn't do any of my secret objectives. Meanwhile, my opponent uh, had no problem getting his. So uh, there's no rule where you can uh, shuffle them back in if it doesn't uh, fit the scenario. So that was kind of uh, uh, underwhelming. Another problem that's not so much an issue for me but this box size is huge. Now, I don't usually have a problem with large boxes if you need that box to fit everyone in it. Now, there's over 100 figures in, in two big boxes uh, of minis and the double game boards and stuff like that, so this game needed a box this big. People might prefer that you cut the box in half and you have more manageable size and you... And you Divide it up that way, that would be preferable to a lot of people, I think. Yeah, so if the theme isn't a turnoff, if you're in the skirmish games, if you don't mind some adult art and some bad language in the rule book, 
then this is a fantastic, fantastic and fun skirmish game. That's the most important thing. This game is really fun. And if you do have a huge problem, you can join the dozens of other people that rated it a one on Board Game Geek because of that Kickstarter trailer. So that's my thoughts. This is Dice Tower Seal of Excellence for me. That it was everything I hoped it would be for a skirmish game. Thanks for watching my review and I'll catch you on the next one.